Hello there, Leo listeners. It's Carver here from Leo Listening, where I help advanced English learners to fall back in love with their favourite series by helping them to break free from the subtitles. So today I'm taking you on a walkthrough of one of my favourite series that came back at the uh, at the end of March. It's Silicon Valley, which is an HBO show. It's one of the pre-selected series on my Freedom From Subtitles program. That's because on the official HBO YouTube channel, there are a whole bunch of Silicon Valley clips with accurate subtitles and timestamps. So it's an awesome resource for working on your listening and breaking free from the subtitles. So it's a comedy series about a group of guys in Silicon Valley um, who are building a tech startup called Pied Piper. The founder is a guy called Richard Hendricks, who is a programming genius, but rather socially awkward and maybe not really suited to running um, a business. And he creates a really powerful compression algorithm. So he is working at the time and he enters kind of a bidding war with his employer, Gavin Belson, who is the head of the evil tech giant Hooli. And he actually ends up uh, getting investor funding and starting his own company called Pied Piper, of course. And so in the company, there's him. There's also um, Jared, whose real name is Gordon, um, who is probably one of the funniest characters in any series I've ever seen. Um, there's also Ulrich Bachman, who is the person who runs the incubator where they set up the company. And then there are two engineers they work with, Dinesh and Gilfoyle, who hate each other and spend most of their time insulting each other. So what's great about this series is I think it really um, kind of characterizes all the ups and downs and the stresses of creating a business. And usually every season ends on some kind of cliffhanger. So something awful has happened to the guys. For instance, I don't know, they had an idea stolen or they run out of money or they mess up a client project or, you know, just all the kind of dramas that can happen um in the in the tech business so there's always yeah there's always kind of a season finale that's a bit um dramatic so I really like it because it really keeps you um kind of hooked and addicted uh to the show so if you've never seen the series before I'm using this clip called Pied Piper's Steps to Success which is a kind of a bunch of clips from the different seasons um to give you an introduction to introduce you to the main characters um, and when I do these walkthroughs, my aim is to really help you to understand the tricky listening bits, the new expressions and the cultural references, because I think the best way to get subtitles free is to have someone watching with you who can explain the stuff that you you just you don't know, especially cultural things or, or things to do with characters in a series you've never seen. So this is one of the things I do for my students to help them to get subtitle free too. So in this video there is a bit of background music that might affect comprehension a bit, but in the normal clips from the series you don't have this. Um, they've just put it on here, which is a bit annoying. Um, a very quick word before we start about the company name. So the name is Pied Piper, chosen by Richard. And that name is actually taken from a German fairy tale, which is about a man who plays a pipe and he leads all the children of a town away with his music um, after he had done the same with the rats of the town but the people of the town didn't pay him. Um, so that's what that's a reference to. Okay, let's get going with them with Pied Piper's Steps to Success. Pied Piper sounds like a great place to work. Pied Piper is the best, right? Oh my god, every day feels like I've died and gone to hell. Okay, so we just saw our two warring engineers, Dinesh on the left and Gilfoyle on the right, who are talking to this guy um, who's asking a perfectly innocent question about Pied Piper. Oh, it must be a, a great place to work. And Gilfoyle says, every day feels like you've died and gone to hell. So th this idea of dying and going to hell, that's an expression we use to say that something is really awful. 
Um, Guilfoyle is probably the trickiest person to understand because he doesn't articulate very clearly. And then in, in this expression, we've got some um, some links that make it kind of kind of tricky to catch. Um, died and gone kind of all joins together in the middle, so that makes it a little bit a little bit trickier. I'm sorry. I'd like to talk to you about a company called Pied Piper. What does it do? Good question. We okay, so we just saw Jared again. Um, trying to explain what Pied Piper is to those poor people who are probably weren't too interested. So he asks them the question, what, what does it do? So questions in English typically get very squashed down, especially the ones that we ask all the time. So here, when he says the question, it sounds like, what does it do? What does it do? So he really squashes down um, the, uh, the auxiliary verb um, and joins it with the word it. Okay, in this next scene, we see the Pied Piper team at the Tech Crunch Disrupt competition. We are a compression company. Ladies and gentlemen, Pied Piper appears to have... Okay, so they just got this amazing score at the competition for their compression algorithm, which really impresses everybody. Double the best Weizmann score ever measured. This kid Hendricks and Pied Piper just ran a two-minute mile. Okay, that guy on the phone, he says that this kid Hendricks and the Pied Piper team just ran a two-minute mile. So this is a reference to the four-minute mile. So in 1954, a guy called Roger Bannister managed to run a mile in four minutes for the very first time. And then after, that became the standard for all male professional runners middle distance runners. So when he says that um, Pied Piper just did a two minute mile, it means that they've completely broken through the standard. So in this case, the standard for compression algorithms. So it's obviously really, really impressive. Oops, <laughs> let's carry on. The ultimate enterprise data storage solution powered by Pied Piper. Oh no. Now that's what I'm talking about. What the fuck is that? Is that a VCR? Okay, so this clip is from the season where Pied Piper decides to bring in a CEO from outside. So if you're a fan of Groundhog Day, you'll recognize that the CEO here, Jack, is actually Ned Ryerson. So Phil's annoying friend um, from school. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go away and make sure you watch Groundhog Day. It's a brilliant film. So Jack decides to put the Pied Piper compression algorithm into a box that he can sell to businesses as data storage. Now he's excited about that, but the Pied Piper team aren't really. So um, he uses the expression, now that's what I'm talking about. So that's an expression we use um, to mean, you know, isn't that awesome? Or how amazing is this? And because it's an expression that we use frequently, we tend to kind of squash it down and make it harder to hear. Um, so when Jack says it, he, um, he makes the T disappear from that's. He joins what and I'm together, what I'm, and talking gets reduced to talking. Now that's what I'm talking about. Okay, and then Guilfoyle responds by asking, what the fuck is that? So a more polite way to say that would be to say, what on earth is that? And he squashes that question down to, what the fuck is that? And then he also asks, is that a VCR? So a VCR was the old machine that we used back in the 80s and 90s to play videotapes. And again, as normal in spoken English, questions get reduced right down a lot. So instead of saying, is that a, it sounds like, is that a, is that a VCR? I'll give you three million dollars for it right now. Uh, Gavin Belson just offered me three million dollars for Pied Piper. Okay, so there we just saw Gavin Belson, who was Richard's old boss, offering to buy Pied Piper. Go for Chambers. <laughs> Ned, did that pussy Jared keep you in hold on? Okay, here we've got Jared, who is normally. Um, very polite, kind of self-effacing, kind of 
um, just not obnoxious like this at all. So here he is pretending to be his alter ego Ed Chambers over the phone to a supplier to make negotiating easier. So Dinesh told him, oh yeah, if you can, you know, what I used to do in an old job was I would pretend to be my supervisor and I would, you know, speak in a really obnoxious way to be able to, you know, um, get through to the right people <laughs> and, um, yeah, negotiate more easily. Who's someone else? Someone who's been on the cover of one of the most prestigious tech publications in the world. Okay, so... Um, as I've said, Guilfoyle here, who's speaking, who's tricky to understand because he doesn't articulate very clearly and he speaks fast. So he just said, there is someone else, someone who's been on the cover of one of the most prestigious tech publications in the world. So here we can see, this is Richard's good friend, Baghead, um, who isn't in the company because he's not smart enough or talented enough. But for some reason, he's managed to basically fall into lots of money and fame despite his incompetence. So you can see here that he's on the cover of the magazine he's reading and Guilfoyle just referred to one of the most prestigious tech publications in the world, by which he means Wired magazine, which is a very famous tech magazine. So you're going to under the, understand the joke um, that Baghead is going to make um, inadvertently in a second. He sounds awesome. Can we get him? <laughs> so he says, he sounds awesome. Can we get him? So he doesn't realize that Guilfoyle is talking about him, about Baghead. So, um, yeah, he says, he sounds, sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. So he takes the D sound, the D sound off sounds um, and joins that to awesome. And he says, can we get him? Can we get him? So he takes the H off him, as we normally do in fast spoken English. I want to back you. Let's make you a billion dollars. Let's make me a billion more. Okay, so here we see Richard with Russ Hanneman, who is a billionaire who made his money putting radio on the internet. Um, and he's not a very reliable person, but Pied Piper have had to contact him in the past throughout the seasons for for money and for help so here russ uses of course the squashed, squashed expression i wanna instead of i want to and he also had a link where he says so he says i want to make you a make you a billion dollars so he adds a little w link between you and a How's that sound? Russ. and then he asks richard that's really hard to catch that question at the end because questions are often tricky to catch in fast spoken English. So he asks Richard, how does that sound? And he reduces it down to, how's that sound? How's that? Meaning, what do you think? What do you think of the idea? Hanneman said you made him some kind of a, a, a deal. It was substantially difficult, truly really repugnant. So here we've got Monica, who works at the investment fund that's supporting um, Pied Piper, so she's kind of an ally of the company, and um, so she says to her boss, her boss Laurie, who we've just seen, um, she she says, oh, apparently you you know you're you're planning to give money to to Russ Hanneman, and she kind of hesitates and says, a uh, 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 a deal, because she's so surprised that her boss would work with someone so obno obnoxious. That's kind of unusual in. Um, in a script, normally actors don't hesitate um, or use filler expressions or any of these things that we do in spontaneous speech because they're reading from a script. But this is just to show the surprise um, at her boss uh, meeting with Russ, who um, is not the type of person that she would normally work with. Okay, so I've taken you through um, the majority of the clips, what I'm going to ask you to do then for the next section is to work on it by yourself. So you can continue watching without the subtitles initially, trying your best to use the visual clues to figure out what's going on. Then when you're ready, when there's maybe a section that you find a little tricky, you can replay it and you can try writing out what you hear 
that's the most effective technique for working on your listening and getting rid of the subtitles. You want to write out what you hear and then compare with the subtitles. So you can either switch on the subtitles or you can open up the transcript to see the full um, text of what everyone's saying. Check your work and then that way you're going to start to see, okay, did I miss a word that I know? Did I miss a new word that I need to go away and, and learn? Did I uh, miss some kind of reference that I don't know because it's cultural or it's to do with the series? And this is where you start actually learning um, from your mistakes and making some progress. And feel free to tell me what you missed or what you misheard uh, in the comments here on YouTube or in the comments on the blog. And I'd also love to know, are you going to start watching Silicon Valley? And if you are already watching, what do you think of season five? Or have you seen the first couple of episodes? Are you enjoying it so far? Please let me know. All right, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon.